In an average year, I should be underwater right now. When we get to the taps in the morning, there's no water and it's frustration for us. This huge reservoir supplies water for a town of 40,000 people, but it's been empty, bone dry, since January. I've lost nine of cattle from starvation, from drought. And it's not just this spot. The whole region is suffering from a terrible drought. So what's being done to help people? And what does this all mean for the wider world? No water. Would it be very rude of me to ask how old you are? I'm 73. What's going on with the water here? We have a great pro problem with the water here, really. Because our children must wash, they must go to school. And we also, we must wash, we must go to work. And we must cook and make uh, food for our children. And, and also the washing, it's a problem. So how do you cope? Oh, oh, oh really we don't cope. I've lost nine of cattle, net, only, only myself. Nine dead? Nine dead. From starvation? From yes. starvation, uh, from drought. Every time you come to where they, they have died, you, it hurts like anything. Not much left over here. Um, and this is from five years of drought. I've had to get rid of all of my cattle. Um, I don't have any cattle left here. Um, and that is purely because I don't have grazing for cattle anymore. They are handing out 10 litres of water per person. It's a big help, of course, in this neighbourhood, but it's not a long-term solution. So you're helping here because the government's failed? Uh, not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan as to solve this current crisis. The warning signs were given five to six years ago when the tram levels are dropping. So solutions supposed to be found, so supposed to be found that time already. But there was meetings after meetings and all the meetings were fruitless. Normally it sort of stays at about 50% uh, level. You're in charge essentially of providing water to all these people. How do you feel about what's going on? It's terribly frustrating. It's, it's something that you, you know you're responsible for it, but there's nothing you can do. Uh, people find you in the middle of the night, they swear at you, they curse you. It's, 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 it's not a pleasant situation, but we've got to try and do what we can. The reason what happens here matters to the rest of the world so much is that this region is currently heating up at twice the global average. Two degrees warmer already. Within the next few decades, that could be five or six degrees. So what you have here, essentially, is a glimpse into the future. And it's not looking promising. I was very skeptical about it. Uh, almost saying it will never happen to us, but it's happened, and it's really happened. And what we're seeing here now is part of climate change. And people are just going to have to, even in the countries where they get lots of, lots of water, they've got to start, start uh, realising the situation has changed Jason. Do you think perhaps of giving up, moving somewhere else? My roots are here. I grew up here. Um, I've spent 40 years of my life here. Um, I, I will do everything in my power not to leave. Right. But if it really comes to that, if this drought persists for another two years, I don't think there are going to be many people left here. I, I got no option. I had to stay here. Where will I go? Where will I go? I must stay here.
And so a parched town waits for rain and tries to work out how to survive. The lessons from here are urgent and familiar. Plan earlier, adapt faster.